trains. Its infrastructure has one large difference from the rest. Unlike the others, when you see a piece of its infrastructure, you know what it belongs to. This is a story of an infrastructure innovation that changed the world. Railway tracks. Since the beginning of time, humans have always traveled from place to place. Whether it was through necessity or just for adventure, humans have always found different ways to get from point A to point B. So, when did this race to advance mobility speed start? Well, we don't really know, but it was most likely when one man who was tired of walking saw an animal and was like, this animal walks, if I just sit on its back, it will walk for me. But unfortunately, the animal did not walk in the direction the traveler wanted, and out of anger he hit the animal. And then he made a realization that when he hit the animal, the animal walked in the direction that the traveler wanted. The atrocities he committed next were unspeakable. The first ever railways were actually inspired by a previous form. It was just an evolution of the wagon way. We'll just go over the essentials of its history in this video, but if you want a full length video talking about the history of the railway track, please let me know in the comments down below. The first ever railway tracks were laid at Colebrookdale by Darby Ironworks in 1767. Unlike the rails shown in this clip, the rails that were made way long ago in the 16 and 1700s were nowhere close to how these looked. The original first modern railway tracks came in the early 1800s. The modern railroad era began in 1820, when an employee of Bedlington Ironworks, John Birkinshaw, discovered the modern rail. This was when he made a railroad track out of rolled wrought iron, which is very malleable. And this was able to withstand the force and weight of carriages and locomotives, which at the time was very difficult, as the old rails just constantly broke under the weight of the large vehicles. Then the steel rails that we know of today were developed in 1857, and of course was also developed in the UK, which is the kingdom of railroads. For this video, I will talk about the railway track structure of railway tracks with ballast, otherwise known as the rocks underneath the railway tracks. As ballastless tracks, which are railway tracks without ballast, deserve its own video because of how different it is from ballasted railway tracks. Of course, the foundation starts from the ground up. Here you can see the subsoil, which is just the normal ground, and then the subgrade, which is a little bit of a pile, which helps distribute the weight amongst a wider surface area. A wider weight distribution means less pressure, which means that the ground will not be affected as much as it would be if the subsoil was just the width of a typical railway track. If it was, the track would just dig into the ground and create a pit. This triangular and raised profile is why railway tracks also look slightly raised above the ground, is because they are raised above the ground because of the layers of ballast. You can actually see how tall the ballast layer is when you look at a photo of a railway section with the ballast removed. Over here we have the ballast, which is responsible for holding the railway sleepers and the railway tracks. Ballast actually needs specific rocks with jagged edges, because round rocks will not interlock. The reason why you need jagged edges is because they will stick together and not shift under heavy weight. The holes between the rocks also acts as a drainage system. Next up, of course, is the most noticeable part about railway tracks. 
the track itself, and the sleepers. Railway sleepers, otherwise known as railroad ties, are the part underneath the track that distributes the weight between the weight load on the two rails. Railway ties come in many different shapes and sizes, as well as speed and weight tolerances. The most common materials for railway ties are concrete and wood. Other materials that are also seen, but rarely, are composite plastic and steel. In modern railways, concrete is the most common choice because of its durability and heavier weight, which allows for higher speeds, heavier weights of trains, and its ability to stay in its place for a longer time due to its heavier weight. Prior to the normalization of concrete sleepers, wooden sleepers were more common. There is so much to be said about sleepers that it needs its own video. So now, onto the last part of a railway track structure, the tracks itself. Railway tracks have undertaken many different shape and size changes over the years, from the original main style change in the 1700s all the way to its present day shape. The modern day railway track is made out of steel versus the old ones being made out of iron. And the way that these rails sit on the sleepers are by fastening systems. No, they do not just sit on the sleepers and balance. Railway fasteners are a mechanism that are attached to the railway sleeper and help keep the rail in place. Just like its counterpart of sleepers and rails, they can come in many different shapes and sizes. Nowadays, there are a couple different kinds of prominence fastening systems, but back then, there were methods such as the railway spike. Just like railway fasteners today, its point is to keep the rail in place. And so, you might be wondering, how are the rails fastened around bends, and how are the rails bent and kept in place? The best part about the hot rolled steel material that is used for modern day railway tracks is that it is extremely malleable. This means that the railway track can just be shipped in straight segments to the site, and then it can be bent on site when it is fastened to the curve. You can also pre-bend railway tracks, but that is for more specific situations. On top of being basically a metal spaghetti string, it's also immensely strong, despite how bendy it is. Here you can see a fastened railway segment with the sleepers attached. You can see how the railway track has an immense amount of elasticity as it is bending severely in this photo, but it is still holding on and staying perfectly strong. So, why railway tracks? Why are they preferred for freight? And why did they exist in the first place? That is because of its efficiency. If you look at the railway track, it's rather thin. Same with the locomotives and wagons wheels. This allows for very small rolling resistance. The amount of contact that a whale has... A whale, what? The amount of contact that a wheel has with the rail is that of a penny. The rolling resistance is extremely small compared to other freight vehicles, such as trucks, where it has a ton more rolling resistance. This is why you can see passenger trains go so fast, because they are almost levitating with the amount of surface that they are touching. Let's take this from the perspective of freight. The rolling resistance allows for much less wear and tear and maintenance costs, and the amount of rolling resistance also saves fuel, up to five times more fuel, so you save 500% on fuel. Now, if you're a freight company, that's a lot of savings. And then, let's say that you have a 40 wagon train set. That is the equivalent of 40 trucks. Not only do you only have one engine, which allows for much less maintenance work, but also one to two drivers, which saves you costs all around, not including the fuel. Now, I'm no hater of trucks or truckers. I love trucks. I used to chronically play Euro Truck Simulator 2. And so you might wonder, okay, you have all these benefits, but that's 40 wagons all going to one location. What if hypothetically, if it was on trucks, they would have to be going to different locations? Well, that's what marshalling yards are for, but that's for a different video. And oh boy, are we only scratching the surface of the rail logistics world. But if you want to know more about that, you'll have to like, subscribe, and wait for my next video. With the notifications on, of course. Also, I highly suggest joining the Discord server. The link will be in the pinned comment. It's a super cool transport community with cool emojis, channels, and a friendly community. And a ton of other people who are just like you. Thank you for the support on this railway engineering series. I'm the Transit Diaries, and as always, stay tuned for more.